So I'm going to start from the beginning. I uh, went to college in Massachusetts, Clark University. And there I actually took my first photography class from the beginning, intro to photography. Although my first camera was given to me at 13 years old uh, for a bat mitzvah present, 12 years old. And um, before that I had a Polaroid and I just remember just documenting and taking pictures and the fascination of, you know, with a Polaroid, seeing the image appear in front of you and how much I loved it. And I would photograph everything and anything. And I hear a lot of photographers say the same thing. Uh, so when I got to college and I actually, you know, was learning about composition and learning about, um, you know, the the light, the the metering, the depth of field, it was just a whole new world for me to learn how to express myself. Uh, so after call, and I loved it, I was doing still lives and I was doing double, ne double exposures and double negatives. And it was just was one of the, the most fun times of my life. I actually met my husband at the time, um, in a photographer in the dark room. And we used to joke about that all the time. Um, so after college, I went to San Francisco and also was continuing to pursue a career in photography. I worked as an assistant and a lot of photography shoots. And I think I always felt that commercial photography wasn't going to be for me. Uh, I think it was... I just felt that I didn't want to be told what to do as um, an, with an art director. I wanted to have full control of the creative process. So of course I keep taking all these pictures on my own and because I'm still young and figuring out my ways, my boyfriend who then became my husband said, come and live with me. And at this point he was in Venezuela because uh, the situation in Colombia was so bad. And this is 1998 when we graduated college. I went to California and he went to Venezuela. So the situation in Cali was not good. And even he and his brother had decided they needed to leave the city. So I went to Venezuela. Of course, I brought my camera. I'm in this tropical paradise, this beautiful Avila mountain next to me. And the city was very big and lots of cement and I really just wanted to constantly get out of the city and he said to me you can't go out and take pictures you're blonde hair light eyes you don't speak Spanish it's dangerous so at this point I hired a young kid to keep me company as I went around the city to take photos on my own and um I think I was just fascinated with cultures um I love languages I loved discovering, you know, just new ways of life for me, everything in, you know, from California to New York to Southampton, Massachusetts, you know, everything, even though every, the landscape was different, us as humans to me felt very much the same. So all of a sudden to be in a third, not sorry, a different country where with a different language, everything was so different. So it was so new. It was walking around the city with, you know, with these child eyes that not, you know, everything was an adventure, every pothole, every stray dog, every can, uh, uh, every garbage on the street, every restaurant, everything was so new and exciting. And I wanted to explore that. And I was able to do that with my camera. From there, the situation in Venezuela, we lived there, we got married in 2000. I moved down there in 2000, 2000. Um, and in December of 2002, the situation in Venezuela was getting really rough. And um, I looked at my husband at the time and I said to him, this isn't my fight. I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this country. I, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I, I shouldn't be fighting for this country. I want to go home. I want to leave. And so he said, okay, let's go. So we left and he had a business and he said, we're going to Colombia. We'll go for six months while well, he set up his business. And then he, we were going to go and move to California because I loved California, had to be as far away from my parents as possible. And six months turned into about 19 years. And I stayed in Cali. Uh, when I got to Cali, one of my first memories there, we were living with my in-laws and I, he went to work that day and I went to go outside and take a walk. And the cleaning lady would not let me leave the apartment. And she said, you can't leave, it's dangerous. And I had very limited Spanish then. And I said, um, I, I'm going to leave, I'm okay, I'm an adult. I had to get my husband on the phone to tell her it was okay for me to be able to leave the apartment and walk around. 
so I did that. I got permission and I walked around the city and I explored and I didn't feel vulnerable. I didn't feel scared. At this point in 2003, Cali was a very different city than it is today. It was still a lot of danger. I do remember seeing areas roped off because a murder had taken place, um, but it was much quieter. There weren't as many people as there are today. Uh, so um, at this point, uh, my husband had said, you know, danger, not danger. I got into a different art. I started making jewelry and I opened up a store and I stopped taking photographs. Uh, then I, my son was born, my second child, and I got, I bought a camera and I started documenting him. And I said, this is what I want to be doing. This is where I feel alive. This is what I want to do. Eventually, after many years, I started doing street photography and I would go out and walk on the city, walk around the city. I would cover up my camera. Uh, I would put black tape on the name of the camera. I would make my camera look old. And that was some advice that I got from a college professor. Always make your camera look old, he said, and nobody will want to rob you. So I would walk around the city. But of course, being, I, I look like a foreigner. There's nothing I can do about that. And people would stop me. And they would say, where are you from? And the minute I opened my mouth and I'd speak in Spanish and say, I'm from Cali. They'd say, no, you're not. Where are you from? And I'd get annoyed because at this point, I'd already been there 15 years. And I'm like, oh, I'm old. You know, I've been here a long time. I'm from here. But I'm once a foreigner, always a foreigner. Then they would start asking questions about my camera. What camera is that? How much did it cost you? And it felt really uncomfortable. So I lived a very privileged lifestyle in Colombia. I had a driver. I had uh, a live-in maid. I had a day maid. Uh, my house had a, a vigilante. Uh, to protect us, <laughs> all of that. And so the driver would come with me and follow me around the city as I would go and take photos. And I hated it. I did not feel free. So I'd make him park the car and I would walk around the city, but he would always be, you know, maybe 100, 200 feet around away from me as I'm taking photographs. Uh, where I live is walking distance to the center where I would find it the most creative and probably the safest place to be because there are so many people. Because there's so many people, I felt less vulnerable to being attacked, but also easier to be pickpocketed or something like that. I wouldn't want to go into a neighborhood that was, you know, completely empty. And Ezra and I had that experience. Um, there were some riots in Colombia in May of 2020, April of 2021. And we walked around with the camera and Ezra's a tall man. And he says to me, Heidi, I don't want to go down there. There's nobody there. It looks sketchy. And I thought, wow, if he's feeling sketchy, then I should definitely feel a little uncomfortable as well. So um, so from my house, I would just start sneaking out. And the driver would say, where are you going? And I'd be like, doesn't matter. I'm going for a walk. And I would go and I would walk. And I'd bring like a little a mochila, which is just a little knit bag um, that a lot of, it's a very fashionable thing. But everybody in Colombia wears it, men, women. And I'd stick my camera in there. I would go with 20,000 pesos in my pocket, a baseball hat, um, a pair of jeans, and old sneakers. And I would just start taking pictures. And I would, people would talk to me. And I'd start talking back to them. And, you know, sometimes I felt uncomfortable. I'd remove myself. Other times I would just, you know, keep going with it and start photographing them myself. One time I was in the center of the city and I was photographing a young girl and her mom and a baby. And they were selling corn to feed the pigeons. And I'd show up every single day and take their pictures. And I'd give them the pictures I took the day before. And then one day I... I heard the woman say, don't worry about her here. She's here every single day. She And she knew my history. She's like, she's from New York. She's here every single day at this time. And at that point I said, I can't come back here because she was telling someone my story. And I got really nervous that maybe someone was going to come and meet me there and harm me in a way. Because you, I was constantly told, you're a foreigner. You will be kidnapped. They will hold you for ransom. They want, they're going to steal from you. And they have no problem killing you for your cell phone. And, um, but I tried not to let it deter me.